traveling with LiPo batteries on an airline is a bit of a worry, okay? Um, there's a lot of rules that you have to keep track of. There's a lot of things you should do. There's all the things you have to do. And it's, it's kind of a minefield to navigate to make sure that you can transport the batteries that you need. And us in the combat robotics world are probably one of the harder ones to deal with because of the size of the batteries we use and the amount of batteries that we use. And so I'm going to go over some of what I do to move batteries around as I go to events throughout the country and throughout the world. One point to consider right up front is I'm going to give you the things that I have done, what's worked for me. I'm going to go over some of the guidelines and how they're worded between the FAA, the TSA, and the various airlines. But understand that this isn't legal advice. I'm, I'm telling you what has worked for me. So don't go to the airport and argue with the TSA officer and say that Ray told me I could do this, right? In fact, never argue with the TSA. That's not a good thing. Um, look up these details on your own. We'll give you some links to all of the data that's out there. Uh, but let's, uh, let's, let's look at what it takes to fly with your batteries. When it comes to control over taking batteries on an airline, there are several agencies to consider. So the FAA is the ultimate voice on what can and cannot go on an airline. Um, and so they have guidelines of what is and is not allowed. They have, they're the maker of the laws concerning what goes on a plane. Then the TSA is the enforcement arm of this. So uh, to put it more in terms that everybody deals with, you know, there's the state law concerning what the speed limit is, then there's the highway patrol that enforces that speed limit. The highway patrol doesn't make the law, they are the enforcement arm of what the law is. So in this case, that's how this is laid out. FAA sets the rules and guidelines, TSA enforces them. But then there's also the individual airlines that have their own rules and what they allow on their planes. And so you should be aware of what the FAA guidelines are. Then you should understand how TSA is going to enforce those guidelines. And then you also need to understand what the particular flight you're going to get on because they don't always follow each other. Okay. So the way that FAA does this, if you have a lithium battery installed in a device. There's a different set of rules for if you have a laptop that has a lithium battery installed on the laptop and you adequately protect that, you can put that in your checked luggage. So there is a lithium battery that is in checked luggage. But if you have an extra battery for your laptop, you have what is called a loose or an uninstalled battery that cannot go in your checked luggage. As far as the FAA and TSA is concerned, the battery packs that we carry for robots, RC cars, whatever, are handled as if they are an uninstalled laptop battery. That is how they view this. Or a, a, a battery pack for a tool, uh, you know, your DeWalt drill, something like that. Those things have to be in your carry-on luggage, not in your checked luggage, okay? Because if there is a fire, one of these gets punctured and it starts burning. If it's in the cargo area of a plane, you can literally take the whole plane down from that. Whereas if it's in the carry-on, as soon as there's a problem, it can be dealt with before it turns into a runaway fire situation. So these rules are good. This is a good way to handle this. There are also rules concerning how large the battery can be that goes onto a plane. And if you look at the FAA guidelines, you can, there's, there's a couple of cutoff points. There's 100 watt hours, anything below 100 watt hours, there's essentially no limit to the number of batteries that you can take on. They have to be for personal use. 
so you can't take a whole bunch of batteries to take somewhere to sell or to give away to like you know customer demos or something like that they have to be for your personal use now for us flying with a lot of batteries to go to a robot event obviously we comply with that they are for our own use um, so if it's under 100 watt hours you can have essentially as many as you want as far as the FAA is concerned from 100 watt hours to 160 watt hours and this is what they think of as a large battery you can only have two of those with airline approval the airline has to say yes on that and nothing over 160 watt hours can go onto a plane that's not taking into account the reality of the batteries that we're going to use for a combat robot or most of the batteries in the RC world a lot of those are larger than this amount. So how do you physically transport the batteries? Let's say you have batteries that do comply. Well, you don't want to just toss the battery into your checked luggage. So it actually states in there how you would make sure that the battery is properly protected. And one of the main ways in which they want to see is that the battery is still in its factory original packaging. And if it's still in its factory original packaging, you will get mostly a cursory look from TSA rather than an in-depth look. So if they're loose and they're just tossed in a bag or they're just mixed in there with your clothes and your carry-on bag, you can expect them to look them over intently. If they are in their factory packaging, they're in the box and the box is what's in there they will be looked at less intently because they are in their factory packaging which has already been approved as keeping that battery safe. So save your boxes. This is important. It makes it a lot easier to get on and off of a plane. So what do they mean by watt hours? The description of this, there'll be a link below describe the, the actual FAA guidelines on what watt hours are, but it's fairly simple. Most batteries, modern batteries, they'll have the information on there. So they'll say, how, you know, what's the amp hour capacity, what's the voltage of it. You can see here this particular package is 148 watt hours. Okay, um, So most modern ones will have the watt hours displayed on it. Some older ones don't. Some of them won't have that particular information, but it's really pretty simple to get. It's just the amp hours times the voltage is the watt hours. It's just simple math. Okay. You can assume that the TS agent that's going to look at your batteries isn't going to do the math. Okay. You can assume that. So if it doesn't actually say the watt hours, he's probably not even going to notice. He's, he is going to notice, however, if it's been properly packaged so the battery is wrapped up as it would have been to be purchased new and it is stored in the box that you bought the battery from if it's like this they're not really going to look at it okay this is what they want to see they want to see it in its factory packaging if it's in its factory packaging you'll get sort of a cursory view Another thing you have to consider is when you are designing a robot and you're buying batteries, try to pick ones that are below that 100 watt hour limit. And this is the part then that kind of doesn't make sense. So this same battery I just showed you, this is a 5 amp hour pack, this is an 8 cell pack with 148 watt hours. So by FAA guidelines you should only be able to take two of these on the plane. But, this is the exact same cell battery. In this case, it's a 4-cell pack instead of an 8-cell pack. And we all know that two 4-cell packs is the same. It, it, this is identical to one 8-cell pack. You just have to wire it up this way. I can only carry two of these on the plane, and I can carry an unlimited amount of these on the plane per FAA guidelines. So when you're building and designing your robot, try to make sure that the batteries that you're picking to use are under that 100 watt hour limit. So these are 74 watt hours. I could have, by FAA guidelines, I could carry hundreds of these and nobody will bat an eye. Now, airlines are different. They've got their own rules. But 
FAA says this is fine. You can have as many of these as you want. You can only have two of these. Okay, So it doesn't necessarily make sense. You don't need it to make sense to you. You need to comply with the rules. Make sure you get on the plane and get where you're going to go. Okay. When it comes to getting batteries on the plane, you should, in fact, be a good citizen, okay? Not try to figure out what you can get past, TSA. So, sometimes you'll get batteries where you've overheated them. They've swelled up a little bit and they're all kind of puffy. Or maybe the balance lead has been damaged and then you soldered a whole bunch of new stuff back on to get it to work. If the battery itself is questionable, I get it that they're expensive. I've used batteries that are questionable in combat because they're the battery I had at the time. I would never take one of those on a plane. So if you've got a battery that is not in really good shape, just don't take that one. Okay? I get that they're expensive, but, but don't, don't take anything that's questionable on a plane. Likewise, don't take anything that is immediately going to raise a bunch of questions when they look at it. This is one of the old uh, batteries for Tombstone, one of the A123 packs that I made. So I make it and I wrap it up. This, these, this is a safe, usable, workable battery pack. But I would never put that on a plane. Because the reality is, if you're the TSA officer and you have to look at that battery pack, you are going to rightfully have all kinds of questions about its safety. Okay? So don't do anything that's going to catch their attention, okay? Make sure that you are a responsible good citizen in how you take stuff on a plane. So you can make it through TSA as long as you follow the FAA guidelines, but you do have to keep track of the fact that each airline can also have their own controls. So um, you, know, you could find out that you have an unlimited number of under 100 watt hour batteries as far as FAA and TSA is concerned. But then you can have, say, Southwest and Delta. It's both say you can have a maximum of 20 spare batteries. So there's, there's a cutoff there. Um, some are even more restrictive. American Airlines says you can have four spare batteries and only two of them up to the 160 watt hour limit. Uh, United just says you can have two batteries under 160. So each airline has their own guidelines that you should be aware of. Now understand that if you go through TSA and you are now in the airport with your carry-on bag full of batteries, it's not like the gate agent at each plane is going to stop you to count the number of batteries you're carrying. Um, so you might be able to get away with this, but you really probably shouldn't. Uh, one thing you have to keep track of is planes tend to be full. You're going to carry it and stick it in the, the overhead luggage and whatnot. Well, the airline attendant on the plane, sometimes they need to mix and match and move these things around. And, you know, if they're going to say, oh, we're going to have, sorry, we're going to have to check your bag. You're going to have to explain, no, you can't because there's batteries in it. The first thing you're going to do is open it up and take a look and see, oh my God, you've got, you know, 50 batteries in here and you're only supposed to have four on an American Airlines, right? For your carry-on bag, if you have a hard-sided bag instead of a soft-sided one, um, that provides some extra protection for the pack so they just don't get hit or clobbered because sometimes other airline passengers aren't that careful with your stuff when they're putting stuff up there. And so the last thing you want is to somebody to bang the side of your bag and potentially dent any of the, the packs because that could cause an issue. So keep track of each individual airline because they're going to have their own set of rules that are more restrictive than what the FAA guidelines are. So you need to be aware of that and plan accordingly. I have a current need to travel with batteries right now. Uh, unfortunately, I need to take quite a few of them, and all of them are over that 100 watt hour limit. And I have flown with those before, but this is kind of an important thing. I, I, I can't have this be an issue. So another option, if you've got batteries that are too large, is you can just ship them. Okay. Now there are rules there as well. So 
if you're going to go to FedEx or UPS to have them shipped, you can do this. You need to make them aware that there are lithium polymer batteries in the package. This has to be disclosed because they have rules on what they can do as well. So if you package them up for shipping that way, they still can't go on a plane. Okay, so they have to go by ground. Um, you need to make sure that they're packaged safely, protected safely and whatnot, and then obviously give enough lead time that they can travel by ground to get wherever your destination is. So in my case, I'm taking quite a few batteries. They're all over that 100 watt hour limit. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and transport them by shipping. This is probably a little overkill. I happen to have a, an equipment case, a hard-sided equipment case that's already labeled as being handled with care, fragile, whatnot. So I'm going to load this guy up with the batteries, package foam around them so they're protected. They're all going to be in their factory packaging. And I'm going to go ahead and ship them ahead of time to the destination. And this is the, the most reliable way to make sure that your batteries are there for you when you get there, as long as you have somebody that can take delivery when they get there and keep them safe for you. Hopefully that gives you some basics of how to travel with your lithium batteries. Hopefully what I've said can help you here. Again, this is my experience. I'm not claiming to be the expert on this, but I have traveled significantly with batteries on a plane. And so these are the things that I have done to make sure that I could get there and be able to compete and, ha and handle what I need to do. We're gonna include links uh, below to so the FAA, TSA, the various airlines to try to help you get the information that you need and they encourage you to look at all of that, specifically the individual airlines you're gonna fly because every airline seems to handle this differently. And so you wanna be completely aware of all of that. Um, if you like what we're doing on the channel, go ahead and like and subscribe. That helps us in putting more content out down the road. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching.